Hi, hello, and welcome back to Danny Might Bakes. It's a beautiful day. It's coming up on Valentine's Day. I should have posted this. Well, I should have done it last week so that it would actually be out for Valentine's Day. But I am going to be making some red velvet cupcakes today, and I thought it would be really fun to film and sh share with you guys. There's happy feet because I have a toddler who just woke up. But we're going to enjoy the sun and we're going to get ready to bake. So let's go put up our hair, wash our hands, get aproned up and move into the kitchen. So my hair is pulled back, my hands are clean and I have on my apron. So we're going to get started. I am making red velvet cupcakes because this is an order for Valentine's Day. And actually, she would like to have several in regular and some in gluten-free. So I'm starting with my gluten-free because all of my equipment has been sanitized beforehand. So I wanted to get the gluten-free ones done so that there's no risk of contamination. So I found this amazing rice flour blend, gluten-free flour blend, which it's really nice because originally, whenever I would do gluten-free, I was mixing my own white flour, brown rice flour, tapioca starch, and xanthan gum. But it's getting harder and harder to find those, and especially the xanthan gum. But I found this mix at just like our... What's it called? I found this at our Save-On, and it's really great because reading the ingredients is everything that I did but already blended, so it just takes out that little bit of guesswork and it is a one-to-one -one mix so it actually does respond. Uh, it is a little gritty again because of the rice flowers but what can you expect? So to get started I have all my dry ingredients prepped out in front of me. So I have my one cup of the gluten-free flour and then I have a spoons of cocoa that I'm going to add as well as half a teaspoon each of salt and baking soda. I'm just going to give those a mix before getting my wet ingredients going in my stand mixer. Important if you are going to be doing anything gluten free, especially if you have people who are celiac in your life, that anything that you use has been sanitized beforehand so that they don't have any, any risk of contamination. And if you're doing like I am where I'm doing several of the same type, I'm doing my gluten free first as I, I explained. I just want to make sure that everything is going to work out. All right. So I know I said I was going to use my stand mixer, but I realized that for this one, I can actually do it without. And since this is the single batch, I'm going to do it in just a bowl so that I don't have to clean it one more time. So I have in front of me a uh, half a cup of cold milk, as well as half a cup of vegetable oil. Again, I love my veggie oil recipes when I can. I tend to use canola oil or just general vegetable oil. But I am going to whisk in some sugar, three quarters of a cup. So I'm going to pause while I whisk whisk, because I know it's a little loud. And I'm back. My daughter is having fun out in the sun. I have mixed a tablespoon of vinegar with a tablespoon of red dye. I use gel and you can buy ones that say no taste because I guess the old ones kind of did have a bit of a flavor to them. So what's the difference? We're going to have to Google it. Maybe I'll put it in, the, in right here. Either way, I have that all pre-mixed and ready to go. That's why my hand is a little bit dyed. I was trying to fight opening it up because tablespoon is quite a lot. It's almost an entire of the containers that I have. So this is going to be added to make it red. Now I did hear that back in the day, the reason red velvet is red velvet is because it was a chemical reaction between the vinegar and the cocoa. But you know, we like it to be a little bit more. So that's why I'm using the dye and I'm pretty sure it's because our cocoa is more processed than what it used to be. But I kind of find that really fun. So now we're going to just add in all of our dry ingredients and whisk until just combined. And I will show you what this looks like. In a minute. As you can see, my mix is nice and incorporated and I have already pre-lined my liners. I bought two different types of liners for my cupcakes since as I said I'm doing two different flavors. Well, two different types, one gluten-free, one not. So these ones I did in just a plain silver. 
so that they are recognizable versus the other ones that I have, which are designed. I wish I could have found a different one of this type. I really, really recommend this brand, this Reynolds Stay Bright. Oh man, game changer for cupcakes. I say game changer because as they are a foil, I know they're not compostable, but then uh, they actually hold their shape really well, which is nice for certain batters where you need to kind of uh, bang them and they're thicker, and they actually stay bright. I know, they obviously thought of that with the name. So I will be using these, not a sponsor, which it was, but yeah, I just picked these up at my local Safeway which I guess is Sobeys for most people now. But yeah, I will show you how they work. My oven preheated to 350, so I'm gonna put in, and I made a nice little baker's dozen because this recipe is a little extra. So I'm gonna bake it, because I have a friend who's gluten-free and we're having a party next week, and so I can bring that for her. Woohoo, go me. Timer set for 18 minutes, so we will see you beauties in a little while. In other news, we're having a good day, aren't we? Picking her nose. I have taken out my cupcakes from the oven, and uh, some people do a toothpick test to see if they are done, which is great. One I like to do, so if I can't find toothpicks especially, is you just give it a light touch. And if it springs back to the touch and it's not like super soft, then they are done. So I'm gonna let these cool in the pan for about five minutes until I can take them out to transfer them to a wire rack. All right, so as I'm preparing my regular cupcakes, because why film that, you just saw me do it, I realized I forgot something quite important in the gluten-free ones. I forgot my vanilla. Luckily, I did taste the batter. It tastes good. It won't make a ton of difference. Well, it will. This vanilla is really good. But um, judging by the batter, it'll still taste good. I'll just make sure when I'm doing the icing that uh, there's enough of that vanilla kind of flavor in the cream cheese icing so that it balances anything if it does bake a little bit odd. I'm not going to be actually able to test those ones because, like I said, the extra one in the baker's dozen is going to be going to my friend who's gluten intolerant. So, let's just hope this turns out fine. <laughs> I'm not a professional. I don't claim to be a professional. I do this as a hobby and I enjoy it and I'm learning new tricks and tips. And everyone makes mistakes. So learn from my mistake. Put vanilla in your cupcakes. Okay, so now I am using my stand mixer because I'm doing a triple batch. So I have added my red food dye as well as my vinegar to my egg, milk, oil, and sugar mixture. And this is the step that I missed last time. I'm gonna be adding in three teaspoons of vanilla because again, I'm doing a triple. So I like to use Mexican vanilla because it is awesome. If you don't have access to it, I'm sorry for you because it really just makes everything so, so, so much better. So I am going to add this vanilla. And here we are at the end of our journey. The easiest part of making cupcakes in my opinion, the decorating. So I have my quadruple batch of icing. I refrigerated it to help firm it up because it is a rather soft icing and I wanted to be able to pipe it and so I have a little piping tip trick. My piping bag, which has a tip already attached. I'm gonna put it into my cup and fold it over. And with my clean hands, do that so that it's nice and open. And now I'm just gonna take a spatula and put in my icing, which is still rather soft, even though it was refrigerated just because of the cream cheese and the butter and all the aspects make it be a very soft icing but cream cheese is all about the flavor so just like before i am going to start with my gluten-free ones just so that the tip if it touches it grabs anything it's not going to grab any of the excess gluten or crumbs because i don't want to make anybody sick
have it. It's a beautiful. Valentine's Day cupcakes. Hope that you liked the video. If you did, make sure to thumbs up. Also, if you'd like to subscribe and share this, it would really help. And I will continue to be, de be doing some more baking and videoing it. I hope you enjoy it. Let me know if there's anything else you'd like to see in the comments down below. Mwah! What's it doing? No, you're not allowed to play with my wires. <laughs>